everyone, myself Prabhu. In today's session, we are seeing a bit momentum in the equity markets. And uh, if we consider the broader equity indices for uh, major countries of the world, we are seeing gains of around uh, 1 percentage point in uh, most of the equity indices. And uh, starting from the European trading session, we are seeing some positive rub of effect on the US equity indices futures also. For us, the Equity index of interest is going to be S&P 500, which has been rallying for uh, quite a while now. But uh, still, I think the upside is uh, there. And in today's session of market movers, we will be uh, looking at the possibility of further trading opportunities on the long side. If you consider the trading context for the day, we had uh, plenty of data releases coming in so far, starting for from the UK's uh, data dump in which we got uh, multiple data points at the same time including the inflation rate, the PPI, input output values, the retail price index for the November and we will not uh, really be going into the details but the data more or less was uh, small uh, you can say slightly on the positive side nothing much to write home about but uh, still if we consider the case of uh, equity index for the UX, UK, it is also up uh, more than one percentage point. So, so far so good. It is all uh, trading in the bullish environment. Moving on to the Euro area figures, we got the PMI numbers for the Euro area along with the uh, individual PMI numbers for the major economies of the Euro area that is including the Germany, France, Italy and also for the United Kingdom. For the uh, euro area, we are seeing better than expected numbers both in terms of manufacturing PMI as well as uh, service PMI and uh, that has uh, given further boost to the already bullish momentum in the equity indices and uh, that is what uh, we are uh, looking at to try to exploit this situation. But uh, the data is uh, pointing to the improvement in the domestic economy for all these major countries and that's a uh, really good development and uh, the vaccine rollout is also going to be happening soon. So all in all we have more reasons to be optimistic and uh, even though the valuations are a bit stretched I think uh, for uh, near term the outlook is still bullish and uh, we should be banking on that. Moving on to the North American trading session there is this all important US uh, FOMC monetary policy announcement and uh, in today's uh, FOMC meet we are not really expecting any substantial policy shift and also the interest rates are likely to be left unchanged at the band of 0 to 0.25 percent but we will have to watch out for any announcement regarding the changes in the bond buying program so far the US uh, Federal Reserve has been buying around uh, US dollar 80 billion in treasury bonds and US dollar 40 billion in mortgage bonds each month. And uh, given the positive outlook and uh, some improvement in the economy, we will have to watch out for any shift in the undertone for, from the Federal Reserve. And also at the same time, the Fed is going to release the economic projections. And uh, as the vaccine rollout is starting, I think uh, we can expect some uh, upside for the economy being reflected in the FMC economic projections as well. Now moving on to the technical front, we will cover the S&P 500's technical outlook and uh, we will also be looking at the gold. Let's start with the S&P 500's technical outlook. This is the daily time frame chart and as you can see the S&P 500 is uh, quite expensive compared to its uh, historical valuation but still the upside is there and uh, even in uh, last week we saw it uh, correcting somewhat but then again after little correction it uh, didn't really go far and after this shallow correction we are seeing fresh buying momentum starting from yesterday's session and uh, in today's session I am getting a feeling that we are likely to see the new all-time close happening and uh, that might happen above these uh, prior all-time highs and uh, in uh, next couple of sessions we can even expect 
the S&P 500 to rally towards 3,800. We will have some resistance coming in between, but uh, from a technical perspective, the current price zone is uh, desirable for buy only, and uh, that's what we are trying to figure out if there are any optimum entry and exit scenarios opportunities in uh, today's session. So looking at these uh, four hourly chart, here we can see that after this prolonged consolidation, the regression curve had uh, tilted to the lower side. It was, uh, it is still showing the bearish momentum might take uh, uh, take root in the S&P 500, but so far we are not really seeing any bearishness. We had this correction starting closer to the 3710, which lasted till uh, 3630. But now, here, yeah, this looks like an uh, double bottom formation. And given this uh, strong upside momentum, I am not really expecting the S&P 500 to stop anytime soon. Not at least before this uh, prior swing high is breached and we see the formation of a new swing high in uh, maybe even in today's session. If you consider the central pivot point, the pivot point series, we have the central pivot point far away, far away around 3518, so that's not really to play. And if we consider the case of first resistance of this month, that's also almost uh, two and a half percentage point away from the current zone. So the SP 500 is uh, caught in between the bullish uh, trajectory and it is uh, living up to that. It is holding and uh, trying to continue its uh, upward momentum. And I think. Uh, we should be looking at the buy opportunities, but in today's session it will be pretty difficult. But still, I think uh, we can uh, utilize this uh, SMA formation, the key confluence zone of 3 SMAs, the 50, 100 and uh, 200 SMAs taking shape around uh, 3670. And uh, if we are fortunate enough to get the uh, entry anywhere closer to this uh, confluence area, we should go for it provided there has been to some consolidation prior to the entry, but looking at the momentum right now, I am uh, expecting that to be a bit difficult, and uh, we will uh, need to be really fortunate to see any sort of correction. Those who might like to take some risk, even for them, uh, right now getting entry is uh, going to be difficult. Maybe in the prior uh, session uh, during the European trading hours, starting. Uh, as we had this opportunity after consolidation, the S&P was holding closer to these uh, 3,690 uh, 3, price zone and uh, that might have given us uh, better risk reward ratio also. But right now, it is uh, going to be more difficult and also we have the currency announcement coming in and that is also going to cause the significant volatility uh, in the S&P 500's price action and we will also have to be mindful of that. So if uh, you get the uh, optimum entry anywhere closer to this uh, support area, you should go for it. But uh, right now, that's looking a far-fetched uh, dream, you can say the least, and uh, we will have to be a bit patient in uh, today's session. And uh, now moving on to the gold. The gold has also consolidated well above the US dollar 1800 per ounce level and now it is trying to climb back above this uh, immediate hurdle. We had these uh, consolidation phase uh, lows which have been acting as the near term resistance. Even in last time we saw the gold wasn't really able to cross and hold above this uh, resistance line and then we saw this uh, deceleration which pushed the gold lower towards uh, US dollar 1800. But now the gold is trying to regroup and uh, it is again aiming for the highs. And I think this time around, the probability is uh, quite strong that we will see the formation of the fresh swing high. Above this uh, immediate swing high and the price targets around uh, US dollar 1900 are possible in next couple of sessions. So we will be looking at the opportunities which might uh, arise if we are aware what uh, levels to target. So looking at this uh, regression curve, we have this confirmation, additional confirmation factor for the underlying bullishness in the gold after this uh, prolonged consolidation. We have seen 
the gold holding well closer to this uh, central pivot point and uh, after holding on to it, it has now started to rally on the higher side. And I feel, as I said, uh, uh, while explaining the daily time frame chart also, we have the this target working out closer to US dollar 1900. And um, these are likely to be reached in next couple of sessions. So we will have to be uh, we will have to be kind of creative to figure out what are the entry and exit points. And uh, to that extent, we will have to rely on the lower time frame charts of the SMAs, where I feel that we can uh, utilize these uh, three key SMS SMA confluence zone around uh, US dollar 1850 per ounce, and uh, that's around uh, uh, just little less than one percentage point away from the current valuation. And uh, we might uh, indeed get that kind of correction maybe today or uh, we might have to wait it out for a session or two but if we get that then i think the risk reward ratio is going to be excellent and uh, we will not have to take much risk right now the momentum is uh, of course bullish but the risk is going to be higher and i feel anywhere around uh, us dollar 1850 is going to be a good idea for the price zone to get involved for the long side trade in the gold while keeping the stop losses anywhere around US dollar 1835 or just little below that and that will give us the risk of uh, little less than one percentage point and uh, on the higher side we can target the price zone closer to the US dollar 1900 so the risk reward ratio is also going to be in our favor so that's it from my side for uh, today's session if any of you have any query or any idea to share you can write it in the comment section and I would be more than happy to take the discussion forward. Before I sign off, I would also like to remind of the risk associated with trading in the financial instrument and uh, one should be careful by using the information provided. A fabulous day ahead. Do subscribe to our uh, Dekoscopy webinar channel to stay updated on the market developments. Goodbye.